Hello everybody! My name is A Chance of Cosplay, and welcome to my YouTube channel. It's mostly inactive, but eh, maybe I'll pop out some more videos after this. As you might be able to tell from the title of this video, today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. So recently I've gotten heavily into LARPing, live action role playing, dressing up as a fantasy character and hitting people with foam swords. Because of that I also decided to get into leather working so I can make my own armour and things with my own personal touch. Today we're going to be putting my leather working skills to the test by making a scabbard specifically designed for a LARP sword. Now I've done a fair amount of leather working not on YouTube and not in the form of videos, so originally for this design I was just going to find a video on YouTube and follow that and be like, ah look, dun dun dun, here's my scabbard for a LARP sword. However, finding a LARP sword specific scabbard tutorial proved nigh impossible. I couldn't see any others on YouTube. And because of that, I thought, why not just put my skills to the test, make a scabbard and post it on YouTube for anyone else who appears to be in my predicament. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Now, this scabbard isn't actually for one of my own weapons. It's a request from a close friend of mine who wanted a scabbard specifically designed for his sword and in the colours of his house and with the words of his house as well. Now, his house colours are blue and orange, and he also wanted the sigil of his house to go on the sword as well. So I'm just trying to work out a way of incorporating kind of the whole thing together without it just looking tacky and messy. And after a little bit of uh, figuring out a little bit of mental logistics, I managed to make something that I am so fucking happy with. Look at this! Look at this! These are the house words. The blood of the house is thicker than the water of the womb, which obviously popular saying blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb. I think it's fucking brilliant. Uh, and yeah, that's the little that's the little sigil. Now, before we get into this video, I just want to say, please, please, please hit the like and hit the subscribe button. If you want to see more of this, you can leave suggestions in the comments below for what I should make. And I also want to just give a massive shout out for Skilltree, whose videos I've watched religiously in an effort to learn how to do anything with leather. So without further ado, let's learn how to make this. Mm, mm. I missed my mouth, that's awkward. Anyway. So to begin with, you need a template. I didn't record me making the template because the template I'm actually using is from a previous scabbard build I did for one of my own swords, but it worked out to be around about the right size for this sword. I mean, it worked out to be perfect for this sword. So regularly to make the template, you would lay down your sword on a piece of paper and then you would trace around the sword. From there, you need to add incremental distances away from the sword to account for the distance paper or leather has to travel around before it obviously stitches, otherwise it's just going to be way too small. Once you have your paper template made, you would then lay this onto your larger piece of leather to cut out the shape exactly how you want it. To make sure the lettering stays on the front of the scabbard where I want it, I'm tracing around the sword with an awl to mark where that's going to be. Leather marks incredibly easily, so you don't want to be too heavy handed when you're doing this, otherwise you're going to leave a permanent mark in the leather. After I had my template all cut out and ready to go, I decided to add my lettering first because I could do this whilst the leather was still perfectly flat. To stamp these letters in, I bought a simple lettering kit from Amazon that cost me something like £20, so it's really not that difficult to get hold of. To begin with, I wet the leather thoroughly and evenly so that it didn't have any weird discolorations that didn't match the rest of the leather, and then I got to work with my hammer and my stamp set. Now whilst the lettering did turn out okay, I think doing it that early on may not have been the best idea because later on I'm going to wet form it. That kind of took some of the definition out, luckily not all of it. I did also have footage of just the plain leather stamped with the letters, but it was awful. Not the lettering itself, just the footage, so that's not in the video. 
I wanted to add some notches to the top of the scabbard so that there was something for the straps to hold on to. I decided to do this by wet forming ridges to the top of the scabbard. To wet form leather you need to soak it first in hot but not boiling water just to get the air out of the little pockets in the leather which then makes it way more malleable and easier to work with to take on shapes that it otherwise wouldn't be able to. So I soaked the leather and then used some strips that I had lying around to put underneath the piece and then press it down in order to get these nice little ridges. Because I had to soak the whole scabbard later on, you can see here that like, whilst the ridges are still there, they're nowhere near as prominent as I would like them to be. So, the straps still slide quite a bit, which is a shame. In my first attempt at making a scabbard for a LARP sword, I didn't put a lining on the inside of the leather. Because of this, the sword just wouldn't go into the leather properly, and it sure as shit didn't want to come out of the leather. Learning from my mistakes, I decided to make a lining for this one. I did this by laying out an old bedsheet, tracing around the leather onto the bedsheet, and then cutting that out. Once that was all cut out, I then just used some fabric glue to glue that onto the inside of the leather. Because I was going to stitch the scabbard together, I decided to make this a little bit easier by folding it over and adding a bead of contact adhesive where it connects so that I can perfectly match up both sides of the scabbard. You can see here that that seam is almost perfect, which will come in handy for the next part. Using an edge groover, I mark a line following the seam of the scabbard. This line will act as a guide for the holes I'm going to make with my diamond hole punch. Here I'm using the hole punch to follow the line I just made. The hole punch set that I'm using is quite a cheap one from Amazon. Because of this, it has a habit of getting very stuck in the leather, which obviously isn't great. I've since learned that adding beeswax to the punch can help when removing it from the holes after punching it through. Please be careful when doing this because if you're wiggling it free and it slips, usually these things are really sharp. And I may or may not have sliced my finger up whilst using one of these. Uh, the other thing is if that glue you put on the seam earlier starts to come away during this process, it doesn't matter too much as long as you make sure you're following those lines. To stitch this all together, I decided to use a stitching awl. Super simple, super easy to use. I would explain how to use it here, but whilst it's easy to do, I have no idea how to actually explain it. And I'm pretty sure I actually did it wrong to start with here. But all over YouTube, there's loads of videos on how to use one of these things. So it shouldn't be too hard to find. So I followed the seam with the stitching awl. And when I was done, I cut off the excess thread and then melted it down so that those threads wouldn't come loose. Now, obviously the way that was stitched, the, the seam would have ended up being along the edge of the sword. So we had to do something about that to make sure the seam was along the back of the sword here. Uh, in order to do that, we have to do something called wet forming, which I mentioned earlier on. But now we've got to do that to the whole thing. This is where I got a little bit scared. To wet form the scabbard, I first found a container that was big enough to hold the scabbard in it. And then I filled that container most of the way up with hot but not quite boiling water. Once that was filled, I put the scabbard into the water, making sure it was completely submerged and left it for around about 20 to 30 minutes. Using this time, I wrapped the sword in cling film to protect it from the water that was obviously going to be soaking through the leather. Now that the leather was thoroughly soaked, I used my hands to just press and mold the scabbard into the shape I wanted it to be, with the seam on the back and the lettering on the front. During the wet forming process, unfortunately, as the leather had soaked up all that water, a lot of the definition in those ridges I'd made earlier disappeared, which was actually quite upsetting. Fortunately, the lettering decided to stick around. After you've made the general shape that you want your scabbard to be, it's time to slide your sword into it and keep your fingers crossed and pray to anything you can that it fits. Now that your sword is sitting comfortably in the scabbard, just work it a little bit more to make sure it really does just fit to the shape of your sword perfectly. You know, you can... God, I'm trying so hard to avoid making innuendos. Once you've got that molded exactly how you want it to be, just leave it to dry for a couple of days. Once that's all dried out, you should have a nice, tight, perfect fit for your sword to just go in and out with e <laughs> Khan. Uh, uh, anyway, now that that's all done, 
It's time to clean up those seams. I did this by just using a blade and trimming down it to uh, make sure they're all nice and flush. The issue with the way I did it is I used a free blade. Please, for the love of God, use a blade with a handle or you will cut yourself, like I did several times. With the main body of the scabbard now cut out and made how we wanted it to look, I decided to get around to making these pieces, the bits of decoration, and I'll show you how to do those now. For the piece at the bottom of the scabbard, I found some much thinner leather, and I used the original template to just trace around the tip, around about the length that I wanted the piece to be, and then I added a little bit extra on the sides to uh, give a bit of room for the way it's wrapping around the scabbard. For the sigil at the top of the scabbard, I measured out a small rectangle that came down to around about where I wanted this first strap to sit. I then traced this out on another piece of leather and then cut that out as well, leaving a little bit of extra room on the sides for it to once again wrap around the scabbard. My friend had already sent me the symbol that he wanted to have on his scabbard on this specific part so I used the image he sent me and just printing it out. By doing this I then had a perfect little template to trace around and imprint that image onto the piece of leather. This is super simple to do all you've got to do is wet the leather a little bit first and then place the picture how you want it and just go over it with a pencil. You don't even need to go that hard it just takes the image. Now to really make sure that symbol is embossed into the leather and it has a really nice 3D effect as it does in the final product, you can't just leave it at that. You then have to tool the leather. You do this by taking something called a swivel knife, following all the lines you've already traced, and then you use stamps to add more of a 3D effect and texture to the leather. The stamps work by getting the leather wet, which makes it a lot more pliable, as I said earlier, and then you just repeatedly hit them into the leather with a hammer, compressing it and really bringing out that 3D definition. Now you don't need to hit it that hard for it to take shape, but by all means, tire yourself out. Now that I had pretty much everything made that I needed to be made for this scabbard to come together, it was time to dye all the pieces. So for the main body of the scabbard, I found a beautiful navy blue leather dye from Fibings. Fibings? Fibings? I don't know how it's pronounced. I couldn't, however, find any orange leather dye. So instead I had to settle for this orange acrylic, also by Fibings. Fibings? Fibings? Yeah, that one. You can see in the video that I'm using these big old kitchen gloves, and that is specifically because our skin is essentially just leather. If you get this dye on your fingers, you will end up with blue thumbs. I promise you. Because the orange was a paint and not a dye, I had to do a couple of extra coats with it. And in order to try and get it into those letters real tight, I ended up ditching the brush and just using my awl instead, which seemed to do a fantastic job. It just took a incredibly painfully long time. Now that all the pieces were dyed, painted and well otherwise done, it was finally time to just whack it all together and hope it looked good. I burnished all the edges, do this just by using some bee wax, running that all over the edge to make sure it melts in a little and then going over that with a wooden burnisher just to just to flatten everything out and make it look all smooth. You don't need to use beeswax for this, you can just use water, there's plenty of tutorials on how to do so, it's just the same process but with water. I just have beeswax and I like using it. With it all burnished and looking pretty, it was time to stick on all the additional pieces. I did this just by tracing around where I wanted them to sit on the leather, then scratching it all up using my awl to make sure there was plenty of surface area for the contact adhesive to stick to. Glue successfully applied, I then lined up the pieces as carefully as I could and, well, pressed it all in and made sure it was stuck. Just making sure that this all fits and oh boy does it. Now at some point I did use my strap cutter to cut out a big old length of string and then paint the same piece of string but I have no idea where that footage is. This is me now attaching the string to the scabbard. I did this by making a series of holes along the back, starting from where I wanted the string to start, going down to the bottom. By doing this, I had anchor points so that the string could wrap round and then go through the holes, so on and so forth. You can see here how the string wraps around. Um, it basically just goes through the back. It's one length of string. And then, yeah, it's got these little anchor points here that you can see. Uh, and then it's just tied off down the bottom. That's basically uh, how it is. And it looks really nifty, super simple, but looks amazing. With everything together, I used a damp sponge to apply Resoline to pretty much everything. 
This just adds a nice little protective waterproofing layer and keeps it all safe. The finish line was in sight. I used my strap cutter to cut some three quarter inch straps, and then measured up how I would want the scabbard to sit on my body to make a kind of eyeballed guess at how long I'd want each strap to be, one slightly shorter than the other so that it has that angled hang and doesn't just hang perfectly horizontally from your belt. Once these straps were cut, I made about inch and a half loops and then punched some holes so that these loops would then be riveted together with some snap rivets using a striker and amp. To hold the straps to the scabbard, but to make it so they could be taken off when it wasn't being worn, I decided to use these Chicago screws for the finishing touch. These are attached by a simple screw and can be taken off as and when needed. And finally, it was finished. Here, you can see me modeling it with my period accurate dressing gown. You have made it to the end of the video! Thank you so much for watching my uh, entire build process on how I made this beautiful scabbard. Hopefully, if you didn't know how to before, you know how to make one now! Please, please, please hit that like and subscribe button if you want to see more of this in the future. As I said at the start of the video, leave some ideas in the comments below. Maybe I'll see something I like. Maybe I'll make it. If you want me to make you something, maybe message me on Instagram. All of my socials are linked in the description below. But it's done! I did it! Scabbard! It's pretty, it's cool. I said scabbard about 8,000 times whilst making this video. So here we are! <laughs> Uh, a lot of the skills that I did in this, I didn't really uh, give a full explanation on how I did them. If you want to learn how to do those, please go over to Skill Tree. I learned everything I know pretty much from them. So, yeah. Now, hopefully, you've learned something from me. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to go to bed now. It's late. This video has taken me ages. Good night.